It's been a while since our last video on creative warm-up courses. Since then, there have been several new additions to the mode that have allowed level designers to improve their work. What's going on everybody, my name is Dan, and in this video, we'll be showing you some of the newest and best creative maps to help you warm up this season. Each level and its creative code will be posted in the description below. We've also included accompanying videos for each level, where the creator explains and walks us through their course. Be sure and check those out if you're unsure of what to do in a certain area. And if you need a reminder on how to add these maps, there are some instructions down there as well. Done with warm-ups? Head to Instapro after to jump in some games with a skilled Fortnite coach. First off, we have a new edit name course released by the Roddy Brothers. This came out just recently at the start of the season. There are two areas to this level, a linear edit course and an area where you're free to do either aim training or practice specific building techniques. The editing track takes under 10 minutes usually, and that's if you know what you're doing. If you're new to practicing edits, it might take you a while longer, but that's perfectly fine. Don't worry too much about the timer result. Instead, focus on learning the editing patterns for each section. The whole point of the map is for you to get better, and the first step is to figure out what edits to do. For instance, tunneling. It looks crazy when the pros build and edit through tunnels in the blink of an eye, but even they first had to figure out which order to place their pieces. When you're starting out, it's good to think about each move consciously. Sooner or later, you won't even be thinking about which pieces you're supposed to place, or what edit you're supposed to do. It'll become muscle memory, and you'll be performing much faster than when you started. Developing your muscle memory through repetition is essential in pulling off really quick builds or edits. Pro players constantly warm up through similar routines, and it's why they're so quick when it comes to building and editing. The second section of the level consists of a couple target practice courses. One has you shooting at moving targets, and the other section has you aim for bouncing zombies. We've never really seen anyone utilize the zombies for aim training, and while their hitboxes are huge, they bounce around pretty fast, so it makes it a bit more difficult. Other than the aim course, there's a section where you can practice scissor jumps, some more editing practice, and then a free build area where you can practice whatever building techniques you want. There are some sections in the edit course that may not be as self-explanatory. You might find yourself a little confused as to what you're supposed to do sometimes. Even with that, give the course a try on your own first. If you find yourself lost on any other section, remember to follow the link in the description for a walkthrough on the Roddy Brothers channel. Over there, Cole from the Roddy Brothers does an excellent job showing off his level. Refer to it, and then give the run another go. You'll find yourself improving in no time. But uh, basically, you just want to come through, you lay walls on all your sides, and you lay a roof and a floor above you, and you got to do this all the way through here while these bots shoot at you. And I'm going to tell you guys, as you see me taking a little bit of damage right there, it's not the easiest part. This is definitely probably the hardest part on the course for people who aren't like super good at building or editing. I'm trying to go through slow so I can show you guys basically how to do. Now, this is an interesting level that we just had to put on our list. There hasn't really been anything quite like it before. On the surface, it's just a short edit course. You load in, start the game, and go through the same edits you've already seen before. But there's a twist. Builds are placed throughout a variety of different courses in a random pattern. With over 20 unique endings, you won't run into the issue of this course being too repetitive. That's a big problem other edit courses have. Once you do them enough, you begin to memorize the layout. That memorization ends up being what makes you faster, and not necessarily your reaction to what's in front of you. While it's not bad to practice a static course, you might start feeling lost within builds once you start playing a real match. With Silage's randomized edit course, you need to stop and think about each section more often than in other courses. Having to consciously think about how to edit each piece will help improve your editing times in real games. Even though it's missing some features that are usually there, having over 20 different courses to run through definitely makes up for it. If you already do edit warm-ups but you're tired of how repetitive they've become, this creative map may be just right for you. This next course is from Silage again, but what can we say? He makes some really good warm-up levels. His maps always include a ton of cool features, and his latest aim course is no exception. When you load in, proceed forward and drop down the hole. From here, you have four courses you can choose from. There's A, target practice, B, flick shot practice, C, tracking practice, and D, an edit practice course. Within each quadrant, you can select your weapons and then choose your mode of practice. For instance, in the shotgun flick section, there's a clay pigeon shooting range. Training bots will fly out toward you and you need to hit them out of the air. You have to sometimes reset the bots with a nearby button, but despite the bugs, it's a great way to practice flicking to targets midair. That's just one example of the variety of training methods contained in this level. One of my favorites in this map for tracking is the 360 tracking arena. You get dropped down into the course and are surrounded by bots at varying heights and different strafe lengths. 
So at some points, the bots will be moving half a tile and others will be moving two plus tiles. This section is great because it combines the short and the long strafe, but as well, you get more unique angles in looking downwards and upwards to hit your targets. To get back to this hub and select another course, just open the menu and press respawn. One cool feature of this level is the selectable background colors in the aim areas. You can choose between a white or black background depending on which you prefer. Darker backgrounds can provide a bit more of a challenge, so you should try using them. Now, there are four versions of this map. One is the whole map, which includes every feature but suffers from lag issues. Then there's the optimized version. It still includes each course but has removed certain sections to help reduce lag. Then there are two more versions, splitting up the courses again to reduce lag even more. These are meant more for console users that still experience frame drops on the optimized version. We recommend starting with the optimized version as it's the most polished one. If it runs fine on your system, you can try out the full version too. However, if you're still experiencing lag, then we recommend just loading into the split versions. These next two maps we're going to show you require multiple players to run. You're going to want to recruit your friends because in return, these modes provide some of the best competitive practice in the game right now. For a long time now, 1v1ing in Fortnite has generally been done with no fall damage, infinite material, and unlimited ammo. These are obviously not things you could ever have in a real match, which made some criticize 1v1s as being unrealistic practice. This map by Gearzy fixes all those problems. It may be the best advancement in 1v1 technology this game has seen in a long time. Ammo and material are both limited in this mode, and fall damage is enabled. These changes help make 1v1 align more with the Battle Royale modes. Plus, there are several randomized spawn locations, harvestable material, and multiple different weapons, all of which help further simulate realistic scenarios. What's fantastic about this map is that it's finally a method of 1v1ing that doesn't involve cranking 90s for height at the start. While creative 1v1s were previously really good for testing the extreme limits of building, the realism this map adds allows for so many more choices on how you start the fight. You don't need to race for high ground at the start of the fight. Instead, you can utilize different approaches, such as playing the low ground, hiding in the environment, or going for a surprise attack on your opponent. Basically, with this 1v1 map, there are a bunch of new ways to practice that will improve how you engage players in actual matches. The map is for 1 versus 1s, and so it's obviously meant for only 2 players. Beware of playing with any more than that as the spawns can end up bugging out. Also, you may need to manually pick up the last item in the spawn room, as sometimes the auto pickup doesn't work. Our only suggestion for Gearzy would be to work on adding a duos and trios version. That way, you can get the same practice but in a team setting. Other than those bugs and the limited player count, this map is a fantastic way to practice mid-game fights and help get those ever-important eliminations. Along with the release of Season X, Epic added a new storm-controlling device for map designers to use in creative. It allows them to add realistic zones to their maps, which is a big improvement on the Zone Wars genre. It had some trouble in the past when it came to simulating endgames, but now with the storm controller, the storm moves and feels like you're actually in a game. Out of all the Zone Wars maps we've seen updated for Season X so far, overall, Richie Toons is one of the best. It's relatively simple and even has some areas from the Battle Royale map added to give it a more realistic touch. You start off in a box with slurp juice and shockwave grenades. Using the button on the wall, you can cycle through various weapons to create your ideal loadout. Then once the box breaks, you can take the launch pad and begin by picking a landing spot. With multiple players all around and the storm slowly closing in, you need to remain vigilant and on the move to survive here, just like in actual competitive endgames. Since trios are going to be a big part of competitive Fortnite for the foreseeable future, Richie included a trios version of the map. With that, you can practice the same endgame scenarios, but with your teammates. They're two separate codes, so make sure you pick the right one whenever you load in. Warming up is a large part of each pro player's routine, and is part of what makes them so fast and clean when it comes to their aim, builds, and edits. If you're trying to improve your own gameplay, you should definitely check out these levels. Throw in 10 or 15 minutes of practice before you hop into a match, and you'll start to see the results. As a reminder, all the codes and walkthrough videos are in the description. Also, feel free to share in the comments what creative maps you use to warm up with. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, make sure you share it with your friends, and also subscribe to our channel, because we have a lot more videos just like this coming at you every single day. Also, if you want to find me on all social media channels, you can at at Daniel Ammerman. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and see you guys out there.